on the web and in your hands. This is MDI TV. Responses to new information about the potential risks of a popular weight loss drug are highlighting some interesting things about how we decide if a drug is safe enough and effective enough. The drug is Sibutramine, sold under the brand name Meridia in the United States and Reductil and some other names in Europe. It works by suppressing appetite. It was approved for sale over a decade ago because it appeared to help people who were seriously overweight or obese lose a few more pounds. But there were concerns from the beginning that for some people the drug might increase the risk of heart attacks, strokes, or other cardiovascular problems. In the United States, the Food and Drug Administration decided the label should warn against giving Meridia to people with a history of cardiovascular disease. In Europe, regulators ordered the drug's maker, Abbott Laboratories, to start a study of people with cardiovascular risk factors. More than 10,000 patients from around the world were enrolled in the study called SCOUT, for Sibutramine Cardiovascular Outcome Trial. In the fall of 2009, the study's Data Safety Monitoring Board alerted regulators that there might be a problem. While 10% of the trial participants who were getting a placebo pill suffered a heart attack, cardiac arrest, stroke, or heart-related death, the rate among people taking the real pills was higher, 11.4%. And here's where things get more interesting. After reviewing the new data, regulators in Europe told doctors to stop prescribing Sibutramine. But in the U.S., the FDA decided that, for now at least, it was enough to add specific instructions on the package label saying that Meridia shouldn't be given to people with heart disease. Canadian regulators have also left the weight loss drug on the market for now. But one Canadian doctor who has studied Meridia and other weight loss drugs says he doesn't think losing a few pounds is worth the potential risk or the cost. So I'm not using the drug uh, indefinitely until I see the full results. And then if there is a indication that certain subgroups may benefit, uh, maybe I'll consider it. We'll see. Bottom line, though, for me is uh, if I prescribe the drug and the patient's paying $120 a month for it, or somebody's paying, whether it's the patient or an insurance company or what have you, then the drug has to have a reasonable chance of working. That's not the response of a weight loss doctor in California who helped with some of the original studies of Meridia and consults for the company that makes the drug. Dr. Ken Fujioka says he thinks it's still useful for selected patients. I would not think it's appropriate to take it away because it does have its place in, in treatment. Right now, uh, the way the data looks, it's that you don't give it to known heart patients with type 2 diabetes. And that's a very select group. And we've always known that's the most high-risk group there is, period. There is no one that's more high risk in that group for sudden death. So it's not surprising to me that they had problems. Problems among people with a high risk of cardiovascular disease may not have surprised Dr. Fujioka, but the hard data now coming out that the weight loss drug may not improve health outcomes, but instead may actually increase the risk of heart attacks and strokes among certain patients is available only because European regulators took the unusual step of requiring Abbott Laboratories to do more research even after the drug was approved, to take a closer look into concerns about increased blood pressure and heart rate. When the full study report comes out, regulators will decide whether to take other steps. But already, the case of Meridia and the differing responses of regulators on either side of the Atlantic serves as an example of how often there's no simple, universally accepted answer to questions about when a drug is safe enough and effective enough.